the proof that Jesus is God. There is one very boisterous debate in the theological world. Islam believe that Jesus is a great prophet. Islam believe that Jesus is one of the greatest messengers of God. In fact, they believe that Jesus was sinless. That's the only prophet that had no sin. They believe that. But one thing they will never believe and accept with you is that number one, that he is the son of God. Because they can't see how God can give birth to a son. If you can prove to any Islamic person that Jesus is the son of God, he will become a Christian. But they can't believe it. And they have theologies to refute it. The second thing he cannot believe is that Jesus died on the cross. They can never believe it. That he died. In fact, they have, I've taught you the two arguments they have already. Those of you who have been following. The first one they said when they wanted to kill him, one of his messengers that looked like him. God. You know, see, spiritual things are really spiritual. One of his messengers that looked like him took his place and died. They killed him thinking he was the one. The question is, this man grew up, he's 33 years old. So nobody, this is a man that have been a nuisance to them and they wanted to kill. And nobody could recognize him and say, no, we have the wrong person. And they killed him. And they buried him, believing he's the one. And even if that were to be possible, Jesus that you call a sinless prophet will decide to accept deception. After he has used his mouth to preach that he will die. The time for death came. Jesus will now deceive the whole world. And hide. And send somebody else who is innocent. To go and die. To make the world to believe that he was the one who died. After he has preached that he will die. Is that kind of person sinless? You know something? <laughs> when I go through some of these things. I now... I said these things are truly spiritual because i don't know why a scholar will argue this thing with his life and you can be killed this thing i'm saying now if i say it in the wrong place my head will be on a train if i say this thing in the wrong place i'm finished the reason i'm saying it now and i'm still talking is because i'm here <laughs> if i say this thing in saudi arabia i'm finished you will just see it online that somebody blasphemed the holy book and his, they, you know his faith. Because he's spiritual. So hear it with a spiritual mind. <laughs> Glory to God. Why is Jesus God? If somebody told us that he is God, it would have been, deb been debatable. But he was the one who called himself God. It was the scripture that called him God. This is why we believe that Jesus is God. And I'll tell you why. I'll tell you the implication. Because only God has the power to save. Nobody can save another person. No matter how holy you are. Have I done an illustration here before? Let's try it one more time. Bring Bande, come. You look big. Let's try it one more time. Richard, come. Both of them are barristers. So I want to show you that brain is not a factor when it has to do with salvation. Both of you are barristers. You are learned men. And I know, ah, Esquire. <laughs> now sit down learnedly. <laughs> with respect, with respect. Now, this man is bigger than this man. Is that not clear? Try all your powers to lift him up. I've shown you this, but let me show it again. Use all your abilities. Try everything within your power. Lift him up. Make him make it easy for him. Try to help him. Let him lift you. Give him your hand. Give him everything. Help him. Be trying. We are doing something. This is where all of us are as men. That's why if you put your hope in man, you are finished. It's a woe unto him that trusted a man, yourself inclusive. Imagine this guy was, was lame and he can't walk. Maybe paralyzed on the waist. 
and he needed somebody to lift him now it's already out of point for him to try to lift himself so he now tries to put his hope and he now puts his hope in a man the problem with religion is that we are using penance to save ourselves so people are cutting themselves people are fasting people are crying there's nothing if this man is lame and paralyzed if he cries from now to the next 40 years he can't stand because paralysis does not respond to tears the bible said the wages of sin is dead we are all dead so there's no human that can save himself and there's no human that can save another so the only way salvation can come to the human race is for another being to come into the human race from another realm who is not part of the guilt of men so when jesus came that was what he came to do god has judged that no man can save man so he decided to become man to come into the human race so two things is that number one he's god that means he has the power to save and number two he actually became man in order to save man are you following now you stand up you look smaller so that you know it's also not about size it's about where you are standing help him up did you no don't help him sit down <laughs> why was this help him up it's not supposed to be very easy but it can happen if they were sitting it would have been impossible but now that he has come from a superior realm it has become a easy for him to are you seeing the difference god bless you so what happened in salvation is that god had to send a messenger to save men but no angel could do it and there's no man anywhere that will be able to do it so what god did was that god decided to become man but now that god is man it will be impossible for men to believe that he is god so the first assignment in the gospel is to prove that this man is actually fully man but is also fully god so one of the things jesus made us understand is that i am god i came to save you and the reason i had to come to save you is because i am not guilty of your sin i am not condemned like you are condemned so i can bring you into my own economy so god became man and the gospel of god is to prove that jesus is actually divine and so in exodus chapter 3 verse 14 we saw the most boisterous introduction of god when god wanted to send moses to egypt this was how god introduced himself he said and god said unto moses i am that i am because Moses asked him, when I go and they ask me, who are you? Who will I tell them, send me? So God said to him, tell them, I am that I am. He said, thus said thou unto the children of Israel, I am hath sent me unto you. So when they ask you, because when he encountered God, God told him, I am Jehovah. I was the one who encountered Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. Go to the land of Egypt and save my people. Moses now said, if I go and they ask me, who sent me? Who will I tell them sent me? He said, when you go, tell them, I am have sent you. So God introduced himself as I am. And every Hebrew person knows God as I am. In John chapter 8, verse 58, Jesus was now talking to them. Start from verse 56. Because most times they tell you, Jesus never said he was God. John 8, 56. Quickly, we don't have time. Jesus was talking to them and he said, Your father Abraham rejoiced to see my day. And he saw it and was glad. The people now looked at him and said, Kai, this man has started going mad. From some of the things he has been saying recently, we suspect that schizophrenia can be close to him now he has confirmed it so they now laughed and then said the jews unto him thou are not yet 50 years old have thou seen abraham because they thought what he was talking about was about age and time you are not yet 50 you say abraham saw your day where did he see you abraham isaac jacob have all died before you were born they are your great grandfathers 
how did they see how did he see you jesus now went to verse 8 58 and answered them he said jesus said unto them this is not the writer of the bible that said it he said jesus said unto them verily verily i say unto you before abraham was i am now the right english should have been i was if abraham saw me it means i was but the hebrew people know what he was saying now see what they said in verse 59 then took they up stones to cast at him because and you know why you know why they took stones because they knew what he meant the moment he said i am he was calling himself god so they didn't say you are foolish they didn't say you are mad they took stone because as far as they were concerned that was blasphemy because jesus called himself god anybody who will come under the kingdom of god must believe that jesus is god and that is the beginning of your interaction with god's benevolence and so when the writers of the scripture wanted to communicate this truth to help our understanding john began his writing from proving how jesus was i am because he knew he was going to say it in his writing so when he started his writing he began the introduction of his writing as a way of proving why jesus is i am and he said jesus is i am because he is god and he's not just god you know there's a way god operates and i wish we can understand this ah if god does not want to send an angel and god wants to do something the way god functions is that he is always on his throne are you following but when god wants to do something away from his throne god will still go and do it and god will still be on the throne that's how god works and he has the power to do it now i was sitting there i wanted to preach to you i had to leave my seat to come here that's because i am not god if god is sitting there and god wants to talk to you god will still be sitting there and god will still come up here to talk to you the thing now is that when god sits there and god moves from there to come here to talk to you the god that is sitting there is the same god talking to you but the god that is sitting there is called father the reason he's called father means he is abba that means he's the one that god came out from so father does not mean i had to sleep with somebody to produce something father means i am where the movement originate from so the one sitting on the chair is called abba the one who is now coming here to talk is now called the son what the son means is that he proceeds from the father so god divides himself one god remain where god was and another god goes to where god wants to be so the god that is where god was is called father the god that is where god wants to be is god's son so son and father does not mean one is less than the other it actually means he was originally on the throne but he left the throne he was still there so the one on the throne is father the one on earth is called son that's what they can't understand and the bible says, through faith we understand because this understanding is not logic it's by faith we understand so there are certain understanding that is by faith that's why you believe it so when john was writing in john chapter 1 verse 1 he said in the beginning was the word he said the word was with god and the word was god what is the word the word is the god that is sent i'm talking to you now my word is going from me in the realm of god when he talks his words are not sound his word is him that's why he sent his word and healed them that's why he sent his word and delivered them that's why he sent his word and blessed them because his word is not sound his word is him in the spirit realm if god speaks you will not hear sound you will see god come out because his word is him his word is tangible in the spirit realm the reason you are arguing it is because you are in the natural realm in the spirit realm when god talks he goes to work that's why he said the words were created by the word so when god wanted to create the word as he spoke god went to work so john was proving it to us and he told us in the beginning was the word 
and the word was with God and the word was God now this God that is introducing to you he now went to verse 14 and he now said and the word became flesh and dwelt among us so the word was God the word became flesh and dwelt among us so the God that remains spirit is called father the God that became flesh is called son it doesn't mean this one is less than the other this is God just manifesting his powers are you seeing but many can't believe it many can't understand it so they they think Jesus is a prophet they think Jesus is a messenger Jesus can tell you my father is greater than me Jesus can tell you I came to do the will of the father because his administration is divine administration as God spoke God's word goes to do God's bidding so that word becomes his messenger not because it's less than God if I say go there that sound has a specific purpose now it means it's to move something somewhere so the totality of the expression of that sound is to address that particular issue but that sound is bigger than all of that issue but that sound has been administered to achieve a specific role but when that sound was in me that sound was exactly as me until it left me and i assigned the purpose to it it was exactly as me if i have not said go there that go there was in me it's exactly as me it's not less than me i'm not less than it but the moment i say go there the operational modality of that sound what is now reduced to carrying out a function so when jesus said my father is greater than me he's not saying essentially speaking my father is greater than me he's saying as touching divine administration my father is still the source of the totality of all things but i am here now particularly for salvation and so my scope has reduced to salvation and so because i am only functioning to bring salvation my father in whom salvation is included is greater do you follow this is the gospel of god this is the gospel of the son that jesus is god and he came to advance god's purpose but he is exactly as god this is the reason why we believe in jesus but Jesus also knows that it will be difficult for us to believe. So he needed to give us proofs. And the Bible revealed a few proofs to us. Number one proof is that when he walked on earth, he was sinless. No man has the power after the fall to live above sin. When Jesus was walking on the earth, he was in all things blameless. The devil knows that any man who sins cannot be God and that's why all the times he encountered Jesus he tempted him he doesn't need to know if Jesus descended from heaven that's not a factor in the spirit he doesn't need to know if Jesus jumped and entered heaven that's not a factor the main factor is that if you are man you will fall I tried every man they fell from Adam in the garden he fell to all the major men even abraham fell when he went to confront pharaoh and pharaoh looked at his wife and he saw the power of pharaoh say who is this he says my sister <laughs> in fact before they went into the city he said in case the king asks you tell him you are my sister i don't want to die same thing with isaac he saw all the mighty men that moved on the earth moses anger scattered him Samson, women scattered him every man that became a general in his generation he found a weakness in him because he knows that only god is without weakness and so when he met jesus the question was not any other thing can you pass the test of sin and so he tempted him he tempted him and in every case the bible said he was blameless he said he was tested he was tried with all the infirmities of man and he said in all of it he was blameless the devil didn't stop there he knows there's a second test for god there are many tests 
even in Gethsemane, there was a test. My body, my flesh is weak. Yet, not my will, but thine. If it were possible, let this cup pass me by. Yet, not my will, but thine. He will look as if he will fall. He can't. The God in him will resurrect him. The God in him will resuscitate him. So, where men fell, he passed through everywhere. The Bible said everywhere humankind was tempted. He said Jesus passed through all of those junctions. There is no test on earth that man has gone through that Jesus didn't go through. And he didn't fail in one. When the devil saw that this man was blameless, he said let's introduce the second test. The second test is the test of death. Only God can come back to life. Since he cannot be brought into sin, let's kill him so that it will end. But he didn't know that that was the crowning of the test. And when Paul was written, he said, we speak wisdom amongst them that are perfect. He said, yet it's not the wisdom that is of this world. It's not the wisdom that the princes know. He said, if they had known, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Because that was the last test of God in flesh. That when you kill him, he will rise again. Because himself is the author of life. Himself is the source of life. So when Paul was talking in Romans 1 verse 4, he said the way he was proving to be the son of God is that when he died, he said through power and the spirit of holiness, he rose again from the dead. So when Jesus rose again from the dead, he proved that he was indeed the son of God. So two ways. God became flesh and then God rose from the dead. No man dies and rises from the dead. Every other person who was called back to life was raised by another person. Only Jesus went to Hades and he told us so that you don't think it's luck and chance. He said destroy this temple. In three days I will raise it up again. Only Jesus went to the grave and when time was over he said death now go down. You know death thought he had him I, oh. he said this commandment have I received from the father he said no man take my life from me he said I have the power to lay it down and to take it up again so when he was on the cross death thought he had defeated him he was just looking at death don't you know that I'm the author of life when he went there he went there to achieve something it was when he rose from the dead that he told us and the reason he went there number one is to pay for our guilt and to receive our judgment number two is so that he can receive the key of death that means he wanted to enslave death because before now death has kept men in captivity now he wants to take the key of hades and then he didn't stop there to also collect the residual adamic power that the devil took to the grave so when he rose from the dead he said all hail the king he said all power in heaven and on earth has been given to me i went to hades to collect power you see why we believe in jesus because he has the capacity how can you trust a man who promised eternity if himself has not gone to come back jesus came from there in order to prove to you he went back there and came again i don't know any man who died and came back to life all the rest that told us about eternity they are dead and buried till date the only one that conquered the grave is the one worthy to follow so when we say jesus is lord we are not trying to be religious we are actually backing our faith on a reality that this man died he rose again from the dead and so if he knows the journey from the grave he's the one that we follow he didn't he didn't go missing in the grave he was not lost in hades he went to hades he came back and when he came back the holy ghost brought news for us he said when he wanted to come back the devil didn't let him he said all the demons all the principalities all the powers gathered together and said we can't let this man go out of here if he go out of here the world will be saved he said but having spoiled principalities and powers oh my god all the demons all the principalities gathered they were suppressing him you can't resurrect but when the time was come according to prophecy all hail the king even death went back demons went back and he rose again gloriously because he's lord ah. yeah, yeah, yeah.
manifest here. It manifests in two ways. Number one, Jesus modeled a life that death couldn't conquer. And so in the kingdom, the reason you are in sin is because the wages of sin is death. The reason you are helpless is because death has mastered you. Because sin has mastered you. But as God, as Christ, as the Son of Man, death couldn't hold him captive. So when you receive him, in you also is resident the power over sickness the power over sin the reason we have audacity to tell that we will not die the reason we have audacity to tell that we will not fall the reason we have audacity to tell that we too will not be conquered is because the one whose life we operate is inconquerable so the dominion that kingdom promises jesus epitomized it Jesus manifested it and so when he resurrected he said now take that life you too leave it that's why he said these signs shall follow them that believe because now we have become like him we have received this life so anything that couldn't conquer him cannot conquer us so we are not facing death with uncertainty we are not facing sickness with uncertainty we are not facing life with uncertainty he saw it all and he prevailed and when he handed it over to us prevailing became our inheritance and secondly he also gave us the power to administer kingdom he gave us the power he has shown us that he has the power and then he handed the power to us so anywhere kingdom does not exist jesus does not need to go there anymore he sends you there because the power he would have used to administer kingdom he has committed to you so somebody is demonized you show up and you say in the name of jesus what does in the name of jesus mean in the name of jesus is not a cliche in the name of jesus means i come in his place i come in his stead i come to represent him there are many times a president is invited somewhere the president cannot go he sends somebody he can send a minister in that meeting that minister is not a minister in that meeting that minister is president he came in the name of the president so every time we say in the name of jesus it's not because we must pronounce it for knees to bow it's because we are affirming it that we represent him and the moment the devil sees that we represent him then he has no choice but to give way that's why in the name of jesus we cast out devils in the name of jesus we heal the sick in the name of jesus we open territories in the name of jesus we stop the afflictions of life because when we say in the name of jesus it's as good as jesus himself was the one standing there when you know this you know that you are the reflection of christ to your world because jesus came to represent To who you are now in god that now you have his life so you can live and participate in his kingdom listen you are not participating in his kingdom like a stranger you are participating there with full rights because now you have his life are you seeing that if i adopt a child no matter how i love that child that child will know that he cannot exercise the same level of authority as a child that carries my blood because this one the dna confess it on him i don't even need to say you have it the nature the dna makes it his right are you seeing that so when jesus gave us his life we became bonafide participators of the kingdom so everything god has now we don't beg for it is our inheritance in john 1 12 he said as many as believed he didn't say he gave favor he didn't say he gave the opportunity he said he gave the right so our participation in the kingdom now is a right as far as god is concerned it's in worship that we respond as gratitude we respond as privilege but from the eyes of god is a legal operation is a right in colossians 1 12 he said giving thanks to the father who has qualified us so in the kingdom now we are not 
there as unqualified people enjoying God's mercy. No. The way God sees it is that he has qualified us to participate there. So we operate in the kingdom as a right. That's why no demon can look at you and challenge you because it's a right. It's not because God is merciful. If I adopt a child and I love him, if I send him somewhere and he talks, they will look at him and say, are you okay? You stranger. Is it because they are showing you mercy? Who are you to talk here? But if my son who carries my DNA shows up, you know if he's talking, I'm talking. So God did not just adopt us. He gave us the life of Christ so that we'll become bonified participators. And that's why Romans 8, 17 said, we are joint heirs with Christ. So what Christ owns now, he shares with us. So the idea behind the divinity of Christ, the deity of Christ, is to show you the power he has to do what he has done and to show you who you have become by the authority of God. You now have his life. You are a legal participator in his kingdom. You now have his authority so you can represent his interest and his will anywhere you find yourself. Sit down. Who is Jesus? Jesus is the I am. He is the son of God. Jesus is divine.